I'm Al Seymour Sr., and I'm here at the home of the Premier, Dr. the Honorable Hewitt Brown. In a short while, I will be speaking with him on many issues, and we'll be asking questions that you would like answered. Join us. Mr. Premier, let me begin by thanking you for availing yourself for this interview. And in the next half hour, we hope we can get your reaction to issues many people feel are vital for Bermuda's future. But before we get to that, what would you say was the key motivating factor that projected you into this arena of politics, which we all know is not an easy road for anyone? Well, Al, first of all, welcome into my home. It's been a while since we uh, had a chance to sit. Certainly has. Uh, from the old days of ZFB. Great days, too. Uh, great days. Uh, you know, whenever that question is asked, I wonder how much of it is due to my own planning and how much of it was the plan of someone else. Uh, I can tell you that I've been interested in politics uh, since I was a child. I also have to say that in my family, uh, I'm only the fifth uh, member of parliament in my family, so I'm not unique in my family. So you've got this kind of politics running through your blood. I believe it's running in my blood. Uh, I've had my, a mother and an aunt who uh, served on the opposite side of the house. Uh, and of course, uh, I've had relatives who uh, have served in the PLP. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the total answer to that, but I can tell you that I believe that this is what I was meant to do. And uh, my job, my challenge, is to do the best I can for Bermuda. Well, that's wonderful. You also, that puts you in a unique position, too. This is the fact that you've had relatives on both sides. And I think this gives you a very a broad centerpiece of uh, having some wider scope as the true meaning and objectives of representing a cross-section of the entire community. Now, as we move toward another election with both the PLP and the UBP having their die-hard supporters, there appears to be a growing midstream of voters, black and white, who are becoming more concerned about pressing issues facing the country rather than which party is in power to deal with them. Do you think this trend will continue and possibly affect future elections as Bermuda becomes a more multicultural society? Well, I believe that it's a good sign when people begin to become issue-oriented. Of course, in the long run, you have to decide which party will satisfy uh, those needs best. But I believe that Bermuda is facing critical issues, uh, the issues of education, where our youngsters are not doing well, period. And we've taken on the challenge as a government. We intend to reconstruct the education system. And we did it uh, even though we knew that an election was coming, because you cannot hold off on improving an education system. It is the lifeblood of a country. It's interesting you should mention that. We're going to deal with that just a little later on. Mm -hmm. I've heard many people say, and they say it to me too as well, they wish politicians on both sides would focus more on critical issues such as housing, uh, crime, illegal drugs, and education, as you mentioned, and uh, a better health care for the elderly instead of personal attacks on each other as they perceive to gain political points. In other words, voters, many of them, would rather that energy be used in efforts to solve problems that seem to remain from one election to the next. Do you see any real change in this, or is this simply a part of the political party system? Well, it's part and parcel of the system, but let me say what people see in the media does not cover all the work we do. And I think that applies to the opposition as well. Uh, my day is not concerned with attacking politicians. If that happens to be part of the day and part of what I do, then so be it. But I can assure you that most of my day and some of my nights uh, is taken up with the major issues that the public considers major education, health care, crime. Those are the things we deal with every day. But I, I'm sure you will understand that there are people who sort of get this from sound bites they hear from certain things, exactly. as you correctly say. They exactly. Uh, it it, it's unfortunate yeah. that uh, the public view of politicians is limited to what they see 
in the media. Some Bermudians take the time out to actually come and follow debates in Parliament. Uh, and I think that when the government television station is in place, and that should be very soon, uh, we will see that uh, there's an opportunity for Bermudians to get deeper into issues and not just be led by the superficial uh, sound bites uh, that they may receive. Yeah, you mentioned the government television station. I'm not going to get too much into that. I know it's coming, out, coming on fairly soon. But in the, uh, there are people who have raised some questions. Uh, it's a government television station, so it is a station representative of the entire broad spectrum. Absolutely. It's representative of Bermuda. By the time this is viewed, uh, that station uh, should be up and running. Mm -hmm. Now, the late uh, Frederick Wade, who I knew kind of pretty well, former leader of the PLP, once told me his greatest concern prior to an election was that some member of his party would make a statement that would have a negative impact on the party itself. Would this be one of your concerns? Well, it's always a concern, but it's also part and parcel of the political experience. Uh, sometimes people say things uh, that help and sometimes they say things that hurt. Uh, we think that we have a team that will focus on the things that will help, not just help the party, but help Bermuda. Now this may be a little sensitive here. There is a perception, and perceptions matter in politics, that you are arrogant in your leadership methods with little room for those who oppose some of your views. What would you say to those who harbor that view? Well, Al, let me tell you something. Those who know don't tell, and those who tell don't know. Uh, you have worked with me. Other people have worked with me. Those who work with me or those who have been uh, in a relationship with me, in a professional relationship, don't accuse me of that. They don't. They just don't. So uh, it's, There's a perception. I, I'm not sure that I know all the reasons. I believe, however, that sometimes what is seen by me as being confident and assertive is seen by others as being arrogant. Uh, I don't think that I'm arrogant at all. And if you've ever been in a meeting with me, I probably chair some of the most democratic meetings that people have experienced. Uh, I don't waste time, and I don't allow for circular discussion, because I believe that time is the most precious commodity. And it may have something to do with the fact that I believe that I'm on the earth for a limited amount of time. I, and, and, and I believe that you are too. And I think that we have to take advantage of the time that God has given us yeah, to the, do what we have to do. Yes, yeah, so the reason I put that question to you is because in some sections of the community, they, there's a sort of, again, perceptions, and they're not always accurate, but they're there. Uh, some people feel is that uh, the, uh, people in your cabinet or people around you are a little afraid of you. And I put that out there because uh, that's perhaps not the case, but this is that what right? people think. And yeah. if they think it, we need to address it. Well, I don't think that there's anybody who's afraid of me. Uh, there may be some who respect me, which is what leadership should uh, earn, mm -hmm. and that is the respect of those who, worked, uh, who work with uh, leadership. Yeah. But I don't think that there's anybody who really is afraid of me. Well, I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> well <laughs>